This real estate family owns half of London, including Mayfair and Belgravia, which are considered the most expensive and most luxurious neighborhoods in the world. They own the most luxurious properties in Hong Kong, Tokyo, San Francisco, and many more cities. You also most likely tried their products because the family also invests millions in food and agriculture companies. The family has close connections to the royal family, which makes them untouchable. And the best part is, you never heard of them. Today, we will cover their plan for this insane success and how they managed to do it. The first mention of the family was not so long ago, just a thousand years, when Gilbert Legroner came to England with William the Conqueror. He was the chief huntsman and right hand to William. At that time, kings gave land to people who they liked, and logically, Gilbert got some land. Three years after that, in the early 1440s, the family invested in coal, stone, and lead mines. Now these were the first mentions of the family. The real rise to power started in 1585, when Richard was born. Like his ancestors, he was also in good relationship with the king. King James I knighted Richard, and he became Richard Groner, first baronet. He worked in the parliament and got many votes. History says that he had a charismatic and charming personality. Fun fact about the knighthood and the concept of time. Richard was knighted the same time when Shakespeare was alive. His son, who had the same name, took over when he died. He married Sidney, daughter of Sir Roger Mostyn. This move got Richard Jr. and the Grosvenor family some estate in the territory of North Wales. But in the 1640s, their finances were drained because they supported the king during the English Civil War. With the death of Richard Jr., grandson of Richard, Thomas, who was eight at the time, took over as the head of the family. Fully named Sir Thomas Groner, the third baronet, made some amazing moves. He built the majestic building of Eton Hall in Cheshire, which still today looks new. By 1683, the cost of the building has risen to 1,000 British pounds, which now will be equal to almost $800,000. But still, that isn't the crown in Thomas' life. Thomas married Mary Davis. Mary inherited 500 acres of land on the west part of a small city named London. Those 500 acres are today known as Mayfair, Park Lane and Belgravia. In the 18th century, after the Napoleonic Wars, there was a period of rapid growth for London, becoming the most populated city on the planet by the end of the century. When Hugh Lupus Groner took over, he was a landowner, just like his ancestors but he was also really passionate about racing. He was a racehorse owner and won a lot of races, and he also did the business differently than his ancestors. As he mentioned, the Groners got and bought a lot of valuable land. Hugh Lupus did the best move. He developed them. He spent a lot of money on development, but it paid off as nobody could imagine. Hugh Lupus turned the properties into London's most wanted addresses. Queen Victoria saw what he did and gave him the title Duke of Westminster. And Hugh Lupus also became a close friend to the royal family. This streak of excellent business moves didn't stop. In the 20th century, when the whole world got a war, the Groners acquired property all over the United Kingdom. After the 1950s, the family would buy property beyond London. During the 20th century, Belgravia attracted many famous politicians, scientists, and artists, and after World War II, many embassies and institutions were built there. Gerald, the head of the Groner family in the second part of the 20th century, was a genius in real estate. He made such good investments that because of him, the name Groner is associated with luxury real estate. Not only was he a genius in real estate, he was a genius businessman. He was the first Groner that diversified the family business. Gerald diversified the business to urban properties, food business, and rural estates. He invested in food businesses, tech businesses, and agriculture businesses. In 1999, he was declared the second richest person in the United Kingdom. Above him was only one person. He was worth over 3.2 billion British pounds, which is today equal to over 10 billion dollars. He made the family to become one of the main families in the United Kingdom and close to the royal family. King Charles became godfather to Gerald's son. Not everything was sunshine and rainbows in the Groner family. Gerald was declared client number six, a client in Emperor's Club VIP, or better said, prostitution ring. Now this was a huge scandal in its time, but 
These were only allegations, nothing was confirmed. When Paradise Papers came to the mainstream, a lot was discovered. The documents revealed a big network of offshore tax havens used by world's influential and wealthy figures. The paper showed that the growners get millions in dividends from offshore companies. These dividends came from their North America and Australia businesses. In 2019, the Groner family came again in the bad side of the public eye, when they wanted to displace 40 families, and protests were made. Last year the family was charged and their name was in the news after a millionaire lawyer complained prostitutes and pimps had invaded high-class Mayfair Street. Today the family owns half of Mayfair, encompassing the American Embassy, the Bermode Hotel and Gagosian Gallery, along with 300 acres of Bagravia, which is the most elite part of London. But that's one part of family well. The current head of the family, Hugh Groner, the 7th Duke of Westminster, who got the key of the empire in 2006, when he was only 25, continued his ancestors' work with upgrades. The empire is divided into two segments. The Groner Group, who is in the real estate business, and Weeds Heath, which changed the name to Groner Food and Agricultural Technologies which is investing in food and agricultural technologies. The company has 25 companies under their wing. Some of them include Gusto, a meal kit delivery service, Whitetail, a company that specializes in livestock reproductive technologies, Jackfruit Company, which produces meat alternatives from jackfruit, and 22 more of them. Their commercial farm produces over 32 million liters of fresh milk a year. That's enough for 430,000 people every day. And they grow 2,200 hectares of forage and grains for food production and animal feed. They also have a timberworks object. The family is big in philanthropy with their Westminster Foundation that invested millions in the research of COVID. And Hugh's sister, Lady Edwina Groner, does philanthropy through the organization One Small Thing, where they want to reform prisons and catering to the needs of helpless children and women. They currently invest in new neighborhoods in Liverpool and across England. Their property assets are worth over $11 billion, and their assets under management consist of $13 billion of luxury buildings in 43 different cities. Some of them are The Rise, a luxury apartment building and shopping mall in Vancouver, Canada, the Westminster Terrace, a 59 floors luxury apartment building in Hong Kong, and Waterstone Apartment Homes, a 432 unit community in Silicon Valley. The family screams old money, and they want to keep their lives in private. But after all, are they good guys? Or I hope you enjoyed this video. If you are interested in business stories and how some businesses work, please consider subscribing. We post every two weeks. Bye.